Welcome to lesson seven in this 13 part tutorial series, looking at how to create your own working Pac-Man game in Scratch. So far we have a maze, a Pac-Man and a Pac-Man can wander around the maze quite happily. But it's a little boring at the moment because he's not got anything to collect. In the real Pac-Man game, we have some little yellow pills which Pac-Man can collect, he can gobble up, and that of course increases his score. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to give him some little yellow tablets for him to collect and a score that will go up the more he collects them. So let's have a little look at how to do this. To begin with, we need to add a new sprite. At the bottom here we have just the one sprite at the moment, our Pac-Man character. He's actually just called Sprite 1. And the first thing I'm going to do, which will make our code easier to understand later, is to change the name of this sprite. So at the top here it says Sprite 1, I'm going to change that to say Pac-Man. And you'll see that now the little sprite has the name Pac-Man underneath it. Let's click on the little sprite button at the bottom right here and click on the paintbrush to draw a new sprite. Now in vector mode you can tell that because there's a button here which asks us to uh, consider switching to bitmap. We're not going to do that, we're going to keep into vector mode. I'm going to go to the circle tool here and change the fill colour to yellow. So I'm going to choose a yellow colour to bring the brightness up Bring that down to yellow, roughly the same sort of colour as Pac-Man, sort of there, I think we'll do fine. And we don't want an outline, so that's just got the red slash through it. Okay, let's now draw a um, circle. Now remember two things here. One is you want to make sure the centre of the circle is over this target in the middle, and you also want to make sure that your circle is not oval, like this. So to snap it to a circle, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, and then you can get a perfect circle. Don't worry too much at this stage about the size of the circle, just get a circle, and then click anywhere on it, and you're dragging the center cross over the target here. You'll see that it will snap once it's nicely in the middle. There we are, that's all we need to do for this one. So I'm gonna click on the code tab at the top, to go to the code section. Now don't panic when you see this blank area here and think, oh no, all my code has gone. The code window here only shows us the code for this new sprite we've created. If we click on the Pac-Man sprite, you'll see that that now just shows us the code for Pac-Man. So we're going to click back on the sprite 1 here. Now this is the first pill, but I'm not going to worry about naming it. You'll see why later on it doesn't really matter too much. This is clearly far too big, uh, it won't even fit in the corridor. So I'm going to make this a lot smaller and I'm going to do that by changing the size down here. Let's try 10%. That's a little bit small, I think. Let's try changing that to 20. I think 20 is about right. That looks about uh, right to me. Uh, so once I've got that, I can now position that where I want it to be. Let's put it just there. So now we need to add some code to this sprite, to this pill, and the code we want to add will be constantly checking to see if the Pac-Man sprite is touching this yellow pill. And if it is, we want two things to happen. The pill should disappear, and we should also have the score go up by one. Now the score will need to be a variable. So I'm gonna head back to the variables tab over here. I have a few variables from a previous um, program. I'm just gonna get rid of those because you will probably have nothing listed here. So when you go to variables, you'll want to click on this button at the top that says make a variable, and I'm simply gonna call this score. There we go. Now to the left of this variable will be a blue square with a white tick. And you can see that that shows us whether or not it's displayed on the game screen. Now we probably do want it to be displayed, so I'm going to make sure that is ticked, and then you can position this where you want the score to be displayed. And you'll see earlier on when I was showing you how to draw this maze in lesson four, 
um, one of the things I suggested you did was to leave a blank area at the top and one of the things in there was the score. We're also going to put lives in there as well later on. So now we've got the variable score, let's make sure we've clicked on Sprite 1 and then go to the events category and grab the green flag because this code is going to run as soon as the game begins. Now we're going to have a loop here which is going to be constantly checking to see whether something has happened and we are going to be forever checking if Pac-Man is touching the pill. So we'll need an if block. There it is. That's also in control. Let's put the if block inside forever so we are forever asking this question. And we need to sense or detect whether Pac-Man is touching the pill. So we go to sensing. At the top we have this touching mouse pointer but if I click on the little white triangle there you'll see that it gives us some options. And one of the things here is Pac-Man. Now it knows the name of the sprite because we named it earlier on. If you wanted to create your main character anything else, well you'll see that name listed here instead. And this is why it makes sense to call the sprite something easy that we can recognize because that makes it easier to see this code. Let's put that up inside our if question. So now if we are touching Pac-Man, so if Pac-Man has reached the pill and the two sprites are touching, what do we want to happen? Well, two things. First of all, if we go to variables, we want to change the score by one. So the score variable here is going to go up by one. And we also want to make sure that this pill disappears. Otherwise, we could keep going over the same pill, collecting it over and over again. So we're going to go to looks here, and we're going to look down for the hide block. So that puts it uh, in there inside the if block, so that we're now changing the score by one and hiding. Now, of course, the problem is that once Pac-Man collects the pill, yes, that's going to change the score. Yes, the pill will hide. But what happens when we start the game again? Well, let's see what happens here. Let's go and start this game. There we go. Let's go up, collect the pill. Lovely. We've collected the pill and I'll stop the game there. You can see the score has gone up by one. The pill has disappeared. Let's start the game again. Click the green flag and oh, we have a problem. Uh, we have two problems. First of all, the pill is still hidden. We've never brought it back, so we need to do that. And you can also see the score is already one. It hasn't reset the score either. So let's do these two things here. First of all, when the game begins, we need to make sure that we show the pill. So in the looks section, scroll down, find show, and put that just above the forever loop. So the game begins, we make sure the pill is visible, and then we start doing the loop. Now the other thing we want to do, of course, is to make sure that the score is set to zero at the beginning. So let's go to variables and set, not change, but set the score to zero. I often see people getting confused between the set score to zero or the change score by one or whatever. Uh, set means that we're actually making that variable equal this value. That is what it is. Whereas this one, chain score, doesn't mean we're setting it to one. It means that whatever it is now, we're changing it by adding one to it. So if we have a score of 15, then changing that by one means going from 15 to 16. Right, so there we are. Let's now go back to the full screen and we'll click on the green flag. So you can see that two things have happened here. The score is now set to zero and the little pill has come back. Let's go up, collect the pill. There we are, it's disappeared. We have a score of one. But if we restart the game, you can see the score is set back to zero and our pill has come back. Lovely. But it is rather an easy game, isn't it, at the moment? Uh, because we have one pill to collect. Uh, so we'll make it a bit, um, a bit more challenging, a bit more interesting perhaps, by making copies of this pill. So we don't have to keep drawing loads and loads of sprites and adding all this code. 
we can simply right click on this sprite one at the bottom and click duplicate. And that puts a copy of that sprite somewhere on our game. It appears in a fairly random position. Uh, you can see it's appeared up here. So I'm gonna simply click that and move that into another position, let's say there. And you can see that if I click on these two sprites, they both contain a copy of this code earlier on. Now, the one problem that um, I have with Scratch here is that although I've gone for the largest um, stage size here, it's still a little small and it's not always easy to see. So what I would suggest you do is duplicate your uh, sprites a few times and just put them randomly around, just put them sort of very roughly where you want them to be. Um, the real Pac-Man games, they are quite close together. I would probably start just spread them out fairly widely to begin with, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, let's like that. Now, when you are ready to get these lined up a bit better, if you hold down the control key on your keyboard and then you use the wheel on your mouse, you'll be able to zoom in on the entire web page. Now, it will mean that you can't see the duplicate button at the bottom here anymore. Uh, so a lot of it is, is now gonna be hard to see but you can see that the stage area is now really easy to see. And we can now move these around and place them more exactly wherever it is we want them to go. Let's position one there. So you can line them up a bit more neatly uh, like that. When you're ready to go back again, if you hold the control key down on your keyboard again and just wheel the mouse back one or two notches, you'll see you get this reset pop up at the top here. Simply click on the button reset there and that will reset it back to the normal size. Of course, if you prefer to have it a little bit larger, then you can do. Um, so there we are. We've now got several of these. You can obviously add as many of these as you want. Let's run the game now so we can see we have, um, what have we got, five, six tablets here. So if I click the go button there, let's see if we can collect all six. There we go. And you can see the score going up. And there we are. We've collected all six. They've all gone. I'll stop the game there. You can see the score shows six. And if I click the green flag to start again, all six tablets are back. Uh, scores set back to zero and we can start the game again. There we go. So that is how to create your game with all of these t uh, pills or tablets or whatever you want to call them. Of course, you don't have to have yellow dots. Again, it's your game. You can create it however you want. If you want to have apples, um, I've seen students do that where you have to collect fruit. Um, I th in fact, I think I had one uh, student create a, a game where you had healthy food, fruits, vegetables, things like that, and unhealthy fruit, chips, banana, uh, chips, burgers, things like that. And you had to collect the good ones and avoid the bad ones. Uh, quite a clever idea. So, uh, you know, you can make the game look and work however you want. But uh, you probably want to spend a bit of time getting these uh, spread throughout your whole maze. <clears throat> uh, one thing I would do is to make sure that it works with the first one. So don't create one pill, then duplicate it a hundred times and then find out your code doesn't work because you'll have to delete 99 of them and start all over again. So check that it works with the first pill, first of all. If that works fine, then make a duplicate. Check that, make sure those are both working fine. And then as long as you've got that working, you can start duplicating them and spreading them around your maze. So that's the next step. So that's uh, step seven. In step eight, what we're gonna do in the next video is start to create the enemies. And in Pac-Man, of course, those are the ghosts. So we're going to be uh, creating the ghost, uh, the sprite for the ghost, um, and then we'll go on to add the code to make it move around and capture poor old Pac-Man. So when you're ready for that, I'll see you in lesson eight.